Hey, it's Father Rob, and as we're missing Jazz Fest weekend, it's just another thing to add to the list of the things we're missing out on by not being able to gather together. And I've been thinking over the last couple of weeks, one of our great losses is coffee hour. How can the Episcopal Church be the Episcopal Church without donuts and coffee hour? So I enlisted the help of a friend of mine and Mother Liz and I got to have a great conversation with him and we wanted to share it with you so that maybe when we join virtually for our quarantine coffee hour this Sunday, we can have some donuts together apart. So I hope this is helpful and enjoy. God bless. What we're gonna do is make donuts this morning. Um, it's a lot easier than it, than it seems and uh, I'm, I'll make it as easy as I can for, for you guys. So. Yeah, because uh, Liz and I are not very bright, so, I don't, you know. I don't know how to do these things. <laughs> so the first thing, probably the most important thing is the, the oil. I don't know if y'all can, if you can see, like I have a little, just a little pot on the stove, just a little narrow pot, and I have it about uh, maybe a third to half full with, and it's just a, a vegetable oil, but you can use canola oil, you can use a blend if you want. Um, that's totally up to you. Uh, the, the most difficult part is keeping it at about 350. But that's where you want to. That's where you want to fry. So I have it. Um, it's a little hot right now, but you have to definitely keep um, keep track of that and make sure that you keep it in that 350 range. Unless so if, you I, if I don't have a fancy thermometer and I don't know what 350 is, what am I looking for visually? That's very difficult. It's, okay. Uh, because I mean, it's, it's not like it's water boiling or something, it's oil. So you're, you're, you really can't tell how hot it is unless you have a thermometer. Or if you have like a, a you know, a fry daddy or something in your frying, and you can actually set the temperature on it. Um, okay. Obviously you can use that as well. But like a regular like meat thermometer would be sufficient for this? Sure, sure. If it goes up to uh, 300, normally meat thermometers don't go up that high. Oh, okay. Um, because it's, you know, obviously you're, you're not cooking meat to 350 degrees. Uh, right. So. <laughs> that would be a lot. <laughs> and there's some people that I know that probably would like their steak 350 degrees. But, <laughs> uh, but yeah, normally meat thermometer won't go that high. So um, you definitely can, uh, as long as your thermometer goes to 350, you can use whatever you, whatever you have. So now that we have that figured out, um, the next step is like the, the, the donut itself. And so what we're using today is uh, it's just like a canned biscuit. <clears throat> so I like <clears throat> the flaky layered biscuits. Um, there's a, there's a, a bakery in New York. Um, it's a pastry chef. Uh, his name is Dominique Ansel. Uh, and uh, at his pastry shop, he sells what they, what's called a crow nut. And it's a cross between a donut and a croissant. And, and they, I think they sell for like eight or 10 bucks a piece, something like that. Well, this gives you like a cronut at home for five cents, you know, like it's a <laughs> homemade cronut with the, you know, like a croissant, it has flaky layers uh, and it's going to be real crisp and then soft on the inside. So that's kind of why I like using those. I'm so um, excited. <laughs> <laughs> so in case people don't know who you are, do you want to, say something about who you are and, and what you do besides being my friend, because that may not be qualifying enough. Okay. Uh, so I am uh, uh, Jude Tozan, uh, and I'm the corporate chef for Tony Sachery's uh, Creole Foods in uh, Opelousas, Louisiana. Uh, I've been with them for about eight years, but before that I, uh, I owned a couple restaurants and uh, I've been doing this for about 30 years now, I guess. Um, and uh, Rob and I have been good friends for, for years so um again glad to be here yeah yeah and he makes the best jambalaya you've ever had in your life <laughs> how did you guys meet i'll let you tell it um so like the the my, my story is that um so back in it was like the mid 90s i guess rob was um on on the radio and um their morning show, they were constantly complaining about other stations that were in the building that everybody brought them food, but nobody ever, other guys food, but never brought them food. And so like, I got tired of hearing it. So one day I was like, I'm just gonna bring them some food. And 
it, that's kind of what started the whole. <laughs> I brought them food one day, and then they just kind of snowballed from there. <laughs> this is this is this is a true story. This, this <laughs> I remember my my morning show partner coming in and going, "Man, there's this guy out here, and he just brought this shrimp thing." And come here, and, uh, and uh, yeah, it went from there. And then <clears throat> one time I had uh, you, know, you came by a couple of other times, and that's sort of how we knew each other. But then um, I had tickets to see Alanis Morissette. And uh, I didn't have anybody to go with. And, uh, and I was like, I'm going to call that, I'm going to call that Jude guy. He, I like him. <laughs> and, uh, and we went and that was kind of the, that, it was, a, it was, it was all downhill from there. It was. <laughs> you know, a lot of people, they meet like, you know, at school or, you know, through other friends. This is like the most beautiful story because it involves food <laughs> and music, right? It's so South Louisiana. Yep, <laughs> uh, yep. Yeah, yeah. And so I saw him making on Facebook a couple of weeks ago, maple bacon donuts like this. Oh. And so, voila, here we are. But I guess you don't, once we get to the end, you don't have to just do maple bacon donuts, right? No, that's what, uh, I'm glad you said that. That's what I was going to say next is that um, today we're do, I'm just doing like a regular kind of a, a glaze. Um, I'm not, you know, and you can kind of take it from there. You can make the, the, the glaze on it, whatever you want. Um, the maple bacon one is just, um, it's the base is powdered sugar and a little bit of cream uh, and vanilla, like just for a plain one. I mean, you can have some lemon right here. You can add lemon to it if you like that. Um, if you want to do um, the maple, then you just do powdered sugar uh, with maple syrup. Uh, and if you have uh, like maple extract, it gives it a little stronger flavor. And obviously bacon is just bacon. You just crush it up, uh, chop it up and just dip it in there at the end. Um, even chocolate. The, the one thing that I would say like uh, chocolate, what I've found it makes a good glaze is um, not just melted chocolate, but you would take, um, trying to think of like uh, when, you, when you make a cake, the icing that you buy in the little containers, uh, melt a little bit of that and the chocolate and put it together. And it makes a really good, like half and half makes a really good glaze uh, for cakes or donuts or just about anything. And then you so could you could technically then add fruity pebbles on top of that, right? Good. <laughs> you could. <laughs> I've been telling Chef Jude for years that the world is just waiting for good desserts that have fruity pebbles as a primary ingredient. Yeah. So, and from time to time, we send each other pictures of desserts with fruity pebbles. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna tilt this down a little bit right here. If you can see, can you see that all right? Mm -hmm. Yes. So I have them out, and this is what I, I'm using. A, um, this is a, um, I'm trying to think of what you call it. I've been doing this for 30 years and I can't remember what, the, what this is called now. Uh, it's like for a piping bag for a pastry, it's the little tip. Uh, uh, and that's what I'm gonna use to make the, the holes. Now, uh, if you have something that, that you would rather use to make the hole, obviously you could use whatever you want, you're doing this at home, but this that's what makes the holes um, for what we're doing today. And we're going to use the donut holes too, right? You could use that too. Absolutely. You drop, drop those in the grease as well. Yeah. At our church there, there's always a lot of joy around getting donuts during coffee hour, but it's the donut holes that really capture the kids attention <laughs> more than anything. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they'll, they'll like fill a coffee cup with donut holes and carry them around for like the whole service. It's so cute. <laughs> um, so what I normally do with, uh, with like the, the donut holes, <clears throat> and you can do this that with the, uh, the donuts as well, uh, is I'll just have like a little bowl of, uh, of cinnamon sugar. And when they come out, right when they come out of the grease, you know, they're, <clears throat> they're still hot. Um, and you just kind of toss them in the... Uh, the cinnamon sugar and it you know it sticks to them it's it's actually really good my mom actually used to do something like this when i was a kid same way you're doing pan about half full of grease and she actually had a donut holder i mean actually the thing you're using looks a little simpler but it, it went around the whole biscuit and had a little ring in the middle um sure. yeah they make uh <clears throat> they they make those and if if you have one obviously by all means, use it. 
Um, mm -hmm. This is just kind of winging it with what you have. Yeah. Um, so what I, I'm going to do before we get uh, before we get started and dropping them, I'm going to make uh, a little bit of the, um, the the glaze. So when they're done, I can I can have that ready to go. I don't know if you can uh, see what I'm even doing. This is just powdered, uh, like I said before, powdered sugar. And I guess instead of making the glaze, you could just drop the, the hot donut into the powdered sugar and kind of shake it around, right? You could, and it would be like a, like a beignet. Yeah. Powdered sugar, a little bit of heavy cream, and some vanilla. <clears throat> And you want it to be kind of thin or, 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 um, it's, uh, you don't want it to be too thin because then it'll just run. It's really, I guess your preference, you know, you want it to, to be able to stick to the, the donut, uh, and not run all over the place. And, and with this kind of a little bit goes a long way, you know, because you're not, um, it's just a glaze. It's a, it ends up being a thin glaze. It's not a huge. So, I mean, you could see like, it's a little like probably like pancake batter consistency, you know? Okay. That's helpful. And you can make it, uh, you know, thicker or thinner uh, to whatever. I'm, and I'm adding a little bit of lemon juice to it. <clears throat> could you just eat that with a spoon? Is that all right? Is that acceptable? Yeah, you absolutely could. <laughs> hey, this is quarantine time. People can't see what you do. <laughs> Nobody's business but yours. All right, so I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna drop a few uh, donuts, and actually, what I you have to it only it doesn't take very long, a couple minutes on each side, and I use uh, chopsticks to, uh, to to flip them. Oh, that's a good idea. So you can grab them like you would use uh, you know chopsticks to eat with. Grab it and just kind of flip it over, so it doesn't make too much of a mess. I was thinking about like a spoon like this. You know, you can like. Sure, you, you could do that, but then when you go to flip it back over, you yeah. have grease inside of that, even though it drips out, and then getting it to turn over without splashing is a, you know. A challenge. Uh, yeah, a challenge, yeah. Yeah. So that's, uh, that's what they're looking like right now. And yeah. so how long are we leaving them on each side? We're going to go a couple minutes on each side. Jude, is this like in the glaze? Is that where you could add some maple syrup, like instead of? Absolutely. How I just did that, instead of uh, use maybe a little bit of water and then um, I'm trying to hold this and do this at the same time, as you can see. So I'm, I'm just flipping it over like that. Did you see that okay? Uh huh. Instead of, and they're, you know, a little crispy, dark brown. Pretty simple. When you have a donut. So yeah, for the glaze, the, uh, the, the, like you said, the maple, instead of doing the cream, you do a little bit of water and just maple syrup and, uh, and that's it. And then you'd sprinkle some bacon bits on top of that. Yes. After you, you kind of dunk it and then you sprinkle the bacon on top. Any other flavors that you recommend that besides maple bacon and the simple glaze, and you talked about the chocolate using the icing for that? Uh, but I like just kind of simple stuff. The maple bacon's kind of kind of fancy, you know. If you want to, uh, <laughs> if you want to jazz it up a little bit, your suggestion just doing the powdered sugar makes it a lot like uh, a beignet. Um, that would be very good. Uh, just the plain, the chocolate. I added, uh, suggested adding a lemon to it if you if you're a fan of lemon. Uh, um, you could also do fresh berries um, with them. And then uh, you mentioned also earlier any kind of a, like dry cereal that you like. Once you put the glaze on, you can use the the glaze to stick the dry cereal to. Um, there's a place here in town, our our famous donut place, Meshes, uh, and they have. Uh, over the years started to add more of those types of things. You walk in and there's lines of, uh, you know, fruity pebble donuts and tricks and, you know, all that's, you know, so it's really kind of your preference. So there are fruity pebble donuts there is what I'm hearing you tell me. <laughs> you have never brought me one of these before. I just want to clarify that a little bit with my friend. <laughs> Get this on the record officially. 
It's a good possibility. <laughs> he did bring me a Mesh's king cake during Mardi Gras, though. Uh, un, yeah. Unprompted, he just brought it. Yeah. And Jude, you have to know that he, Father Rob shares this, this king cake with me, <laughs> and it's amazing. <laughs> I'm very grateful that you bring it to him. <laughs> Yeah, wow. we used it in our in our youth's uh, king cake tasting that they used to raise money for their mission trip. We used it in the king cake tasting this year. It performed quite well. It may have performed well because I kept putting votes in for it, but it performed well. <laughs> you, put, you put multiple votes? <laughs> it is a Louisiana election, so, you know. <laughs> you have to do it the right way. All right, so I pulled the, uh, the first batch out, and I'm, and I'm laying in the, uh, the second batch in now. And I'm going to go ahead and throw the, uh, the, little, the holes in also. <laughs> yeah, we cannot forget the donut holes. There would be great weeping and gnashing of teeth. <laughs> I mean, there's just no point of even having donuts without those donut holes. <laughs> so you can, you can see over here the ones that I, uh, I pulled out. I guess real, real crispy on the outside, um, soft on the inside. Two minutes on each side, very simple. How long do they need to sit before you can start adding the toppings to them? As soon as you can touch them. Oh. <laughs> yeah, as long as you can handle the, the heat, as soon as you can touch them. And if you can't handle the heat, then get out <laughs> of the kitchen, right? right. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I had no idea that like delicious donuts were so like closely within my grasp. <laughs> this is so accessible. It feels like I've been missing out on something my whole life. And I, I like the, the fact that, you know, it, it doesn't take a lot of time and there's not a whole bunch of preparation. It's, uh, you know, oil and a can of biscuits and, you know, just some things that you probably already have around your, your house. You can, you can make the flavors with whatever you, whatever you have. So, um, Pretty, pretty easy. I do wonder though, you know, like it's, it seems pretty easy when a chef with 30 years of experience is doing it, but <laughs> like what happens when we end this call and you I have to, it myself. <laughs> I said the most important thing is the, the temperature of the, of the grease. So if you, if you don't pay attention to that, obviously you can burn, the, you could burn them. That would be catastrophic. Uh, you know, you have kids, uh, and, and adults waiting for these donuts in there, <laughs> they're sitting there smoking in the, uh, in the grease. Um, I'm glad you described that as a catastrophe because that is, the, <laughs> that is the most appropriate word I could think of. Yeah, rightfully so, yeah. <laughs> I can just imagine having like a St. Paul's donut fail, you know, like video stream of like just royally messing it up. <laughs> well, this could end up like, I don't know if y'all have ever watched that show i think it's on maybe netflix nailed it oh yeah <laughs> where they where they give them a you know picture of this is what this cake looks like you know here are all the things you need to make it go and then I, the the outcome is much different it's a really funny show and uh I, I, it could be that our donuts end up that way <laughs> luckily they don't have to be pretty right they just got to be edible <laughs> So this is what I, I did the uh, the donut holes and they're they're tiny just because I use the, the little tip that I use was tiny but obviously you can make the hole as big as you like with whatever you have and I just tossed them in uh, in powdered sugar. Yeah, nice. that's wow. I mean, it seems so simple. <laughs> Jackson, try one and see if they're okay. I'll let my son Jackson see if they're all right. Pretty good. <laughs> he approves. He approves. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> good good jude tested jackson approved this is That's good right. wow i feel like we should add music to this part <laughs> as they come out of the oil <laughs> so we might as well finish this off if we're gonna we're getting this far right yeah go all the way yeah so this is uh the glaze and I'm just taking the donut and just putting it in the uh, straight into it like that. Oh, nice. Yeah. And if you really want to get 
funky. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that is a masterpiece of, of culinary genius. It's so beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> That's how you make donuts. Oh, I'm crying. That's so funny. <laughs> <laughs> Run a tear to your eye. <laughs> a little bit. A little bit. <laughs> Also so beautiful, obviously. <laughs> well, Jude, we, uh, we really appreciate it. You know, in the midst of all of this, it's funny the things that you, that you really miss. Um, and it may seem simple, but, but the little things matter, don't they? Yeah, they do a lot. Well, I hope this, uh, this helps you guys. And it's, uh, it's, uh, educational and, and entertaining as well for your for your people <laughs> yeah well thanks for uh for helping us out and uh and be one of our people today yes thank well, you so much happy to